People have been asking me to talk about Stokes space for a couple of years. I long resisted it because I didn't think I had a useful perspective to add, and I had no way of answering the question that I thought people really wanted answered. But I was looking at it recently, and I realized that I had a way to add something to the conversation and do the sort of analysis that I like to do. When I'm analyzing a company, I'm trying to evaluate the chances that it can become a commercial success. There are a bunch of different ways of doing such an analysis. My starting point is usually looking at four things that I will call my pillars of commercial success. Pillar one is a good idea. Note the emphasis on the word good. It's not a cool idea. It's not a paradigm-breaking idea. It's a good idea. Good ideas are often simple. Remember that Amazon started with the idea, maybe we could sell books using this internet thing. Pillar 2 is a team that can execute on the good idea. They're the obvious technical skills required to do whatever you want to do, but you also need what I call a founder class entrepreneur. You need somebody that understands the technical side and goal deeply, somebody who can deal with investors, and somebody who can make a dollar scream. These people are not surprisingly rare. Pillar three is a meaningful market. You need people that are willing to pay you cash money. This is about having a market where your new company can be competitive enough to make money. Pillar four is runway. You need time to bring your good idea to reality. An idea that is attainable and a management team that can keep your cash burn as low as practical is critical because pretty much everything costs more and takes longer than you expect. Now let's talk about Stoke. We'll start with Stoke's idea, which is all about second stage reuse. SpaceX is working on that with Starship, but nobody else has even gotten to first stage reuse. Stoke's second stage is a modified capsule shape and is made out of stainless steel. It is fueled by liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. Their engine uses a traditional expander cycle where the very cold fuel is run through the rocket nozzle and the combustion heat produces a pressurized output that is used to power the turbo pump. This is the same cycle used by the hugely popular RL10 upper stage engine. There are a few different variants of the expander cycle and it's not clear to me which one they have chosen and that choice probably doesn't matter for this analysis. Note that the actual diagram might look a little different than this. At this point, a traditional design puts the engine with a large nozzle at the bottom of the stage, and you're off and running. Stoke has a different idea, however. Instead of a single big combustion chamber, they are putting 30 small combustion chambers spaced equally around the outside of the second stage. These combustion chambers can be independently controlled to provide differential thrust and therefore steering. In 2023, Stoke posted this video of their second hopper flight test. The test shows they are able to get their engine up and running and have enough control to achieve a hop with 15 combustion chambers. Note that this is a very early test. A short hop is a long way from a second stage engine that runs for a full cycle and meets performance requirements. At this point, I hope you're saying to yourself, this looks complicated and I don't understand the point. The point of their design is all about getting the second stage through re-entry and back to ground. Their approach is a new one using active cooling to keep their second stage from melting. Built into the base of the second stage is a heat exchanger, and it will take in cold liquid hydrogen, absorb re-entry heat, and use that heat to drive the expander cycle turbo pumps the same way nozzle heat is used on ascent. It's not clear what happens to the heated hydrogen, but my best bet is it is burned in the rocket combustion chambers with some liquid oxygen, helping protect the rocket chambers from the heat of re-entry. This is the same thing Falcon 9 does when it starts its engines during re-entry. The system that handles both ascent and descent and uses active cooling is Stokes' idea. 
Will it work? I've thought long and hard about this question, and my very firm answer is, I don't know. Reentry heating is notoriously complicated to model, so this isn't an easy question to answer. The best summary for what has been tried for active cooling appears to be this NASA memorandum from 1994. My quick summary is that it turns out, not surprisingly, to be very complicated, though I will note that they were working primarily on winged structures, which are much more complicated than the capsule shape that Stoke is envisioning. This paper references 55 different papers, so enjoy your time exploring them and figuring out your answer on whether it will work. To figure out whether active cooling might be better, there are many things you want to consider. Which one has a greater payload penalty? Is one 10% and the other 40%? Or are they pretty close? How do their development costs and times compare? How much will it construct to cost a vehicle using each technology? Is one more robust than the other? What failure modes do they have? Weighing all these factors would be a long and challenging project for any engineering team, and it's not something we can do looking from the outside. We simply don't know. It is often useful to look at prior art. If we look at existing systems, the shuttle orbiter used heat shielding tiles. The Soviet Buran shuttle used heat shield tiles. The Air Force's X-37B mini shuttle uses heat shielding tiles. Sierra Nevada's Dream Chaser cargo system uses tiles. And of course, Starship uses heat shield tiles. Five systems already deployed or entering testing, all using tiles. And on the other side, a new concept that has been explored a bit, but never built. Conventional wisdom is always right, except when it isn't but you need to really understand what is going on before you decide that you are right and everyone else is wrong. My next analysis point is a team that can execute on the idea. Stoke has two co-founders. Andy Lopsa is the CEO. His past experience is as the director for the BE-3 and BE-3U engines at Blue Origin and as an engineer for the BE-4. His co-founder, Tom Feldman, is CTO for the company and he brings specific experience from the BE-4 program. Engine development experience is obviously critical to building a new launch system, especially one with new engine concepts. What I don't see at Stoke is an entrepreneur founder type, the person who will figure out the critical path to operation, the person who will deal with investors, the person who understands efficiency in both time and money. I also don't see the distilled vision I would hope for, there is a long-term vision, but what is the path to take a small company in Kent, Washington to one that is successful with customers around the world? The entrepreneur founder is the make or break person for most startups. My other concern is that both founders come from Blue Origin. Blue Origin is likely the new space company that is most like the old space companies, and therefore least likely, in my opinion, to create entrepreneurs. The next analysis point is a meaningful market. Looking at Stokes' website and the materials, what I see is their market description is, any orbit, any time. The US launch market is very complex. I can easily come up with nine distinct markets. Some are competitive, some are very hard to compete in. If you want a little more detail on these markets, see my video, Who Will Compete with SpaceX? To compete in one of these markets, you need to be a credible company and able to compete directly with the three U.S. companies launching now, Rocket Lab, ULA, and SpaceX. All three of these companies have advantages, existing launch sites, lucrative fixed-price contracts, and reasonable flight rates. These are structural advantages, ones that are very hard for new entrants to counter. You will need a compelling reason why a customer would choose to fly with you over these existing competitors. And just to make things more fun, all the existing launch companies are not selling services at their most competitive price. They are selling at the price that maximizes their revenue. Aim to undercut them by 25%, and you may find out that they can undercut your best price. Finally, you need to have enough runway. Enough money to keep your company running for long enough for you to reach your goal and get a chance to compete. Lack of enough runway is the killer of startup companies in many different industries.
we interestingly have some numbers we can throw at this. Falcon 9 1.0 was a simple launcher using the already developed Merlin 1C engine plus a new vacuum variant of that engine. It contained no real innovations. SpaceX spent $443 million developing that simple rocket, including the first two flight vehicles. Later versions of Falcon 9 deployed two new ideas, a significantly improved version of the Merlin engine and all of the tech for first stage landing. That cost them a further billion dollars. Stoke is developing a first stage with a brand new advanced engine, and they plan to land it like Falcon 9, and they have the brand new second stage reuse tech to develop and test. That's a lot of new stuff, and a reasonable price take is somewhere between one and two billion dollars. So far, Stoke has raised 170 million dollars in total. Will that be enough for them to finish their idea? Will they be fast enough to compete with Starship and Neutron? What does my analysis suggest? Stoke has an interesting idea, but I don't have enough information to evaluate whether it's a good idea compared to the alternatives. I'm concerned that they don't have the right leadership team. They are high on engineering, but lack the driving founder who can do all the things that need to be done. I'm not sure what market they're trying to target. Launch is very much a cutthroat business, and the existing companies are entrenched. You need a really good market plan. Stokes' plan is quite complex, and my guess is that it's one to two billion dollars to execute on their idea. They currently have less than a tenth of that. I love different ideas, but my analysis is that Stoke is unlikely to become a commercial success. If you enjoyed this video, please send me this t-shirt, size medium, Heather Midnight Navy.